Sup, Nibbus. D Balls here. Check out the tag. Check out the tag. But um, in today's video, we're going to be having a discussion with another homie talking about Kellen Khalifa, among some other little stuff. But basically, um, their characters and how they were handled in Dragon Ball Super, how they could have been handled better, talking about the criticism, all that jazz. I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Tell me what you guys' thoughts on uh, Kellen Khalifa's characters in the comments. Like and subscribe if you're someone new and you're just seeing my channel. I talk about anime shit, all that jazz. Peace. <laughs> There we go. Can you hear me? Yo. What's yeah. Up? Okay, wait. What was your question? Let me make sure I got it. We're probably going to just like rant because I have a lot to say on this topic too. All right. Facts. Facts. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. basically, um, what do you think they're going to do for the anime? Because in anime, because they did like a lot of like talking about MUI constantly gassing it the fuck up throughout most of the Tournament of Power. Uh, it was more clear cut and dry that Goku was just flat out stronger than Beerus and above him. And I think he even surpassed uh, Awakened Jiren, putting him even stronger. And mm -hmm. Beerus never even implies that he has any techniques. But in the manga, they don't say anything. In fact, they barely talk about MUI. Granted, it was rushed. So he did it like, what, a chapter or two and then clips for that. Yeah. So Beerus then, like, in the moral arc, Harry's himself like he can either handle Goku or hang with Goku and seeing him train with uh, Whis, it didn't seem like he was even faced because Beerus has been sort of like grooming him and Vegeta to have an eventual fight, but he didn't even want to fight Goku and we know how Beerus likes to fight. So what are they going to do for like the anime if they adapt the moral art? Because if he masters it, then he's just flat out stronger than Beerus. Yes. Yeah, so here's, here's like the interesting like headcanon, right? Because it's not really like so much prudence, I won't say it as a fact, but there is things that back it up. My idea is that Beerus is someone that is training, right? That's why, like, he in the manga goes from like being based off feats and scaling and statements and shit below MUI to like smacking Vegeta, or like even you can even argue like Vegeta's to scale above him based off like uh, manga feats and shit, but then he gets like put, you know, below Beerus. And based yeah. on how Beerus is like talking to Vegeta, right? Their conversation is about like, Vegeta, you're letting the past hold you back, you know, that's what's limiting your growth. I don't do that. My growth is unlimited. This doesn't say that he can like fucking do whatever, but it just means that Beerus yeah. can grow to wherever he wants to grow to through the use of training. He isn't limited by any way. And this lets yeah. us know that Beerus is someone that is evolving throughout the story. So my head canon is that there is definitely a case to say Goku and the rest were stronger than Beerus at this point, and Beerus has been training himself to get back above them. Or my second idea is that Beerus, due to being rusty from being asleep all those years, has never truly been at his 100%, like his prime, and he's slowly reaching that level again, and he's growing past it. You know, I think both of those work pretty well with the narrative and would explain why Beerus is like kind of like, oh, he's kind of fodder, you know, we can beat him now, all these feats and shit, and then he's now like, I can like slap this nigga if I wanted to. Yeah. So with that, with his like uh, having like more potential, there are a few things they could do with that uh, running with that head cannon. One, they could do something with like his race because we don't know much about Beerus's race or how he was chosen to be a god of destruction. He had to have had the same potential as like a Goku and Vegeta for Whis to have offered uh, Vegeta or Goku the position, and Beerus have done it before him because you know you get selected. So Beerus had to have been. Mm -hmm pretty powerful and as we know he's like what millions of years old so he's been around for a long time so what they could do uh i guess is in your way say he has like potential and he can train and do like his powers above uh this is like this could be backed up because uh in the manga uh when they have that little god tournament belmont avoids fighting because mainly because he knows how beerus gets really pissed off really quickly like when Vegeta gets too much of a lick in, he got way too angry and put him yeah, in the Beerus fucking starts dirt. Trying to like fuck you up. He's like really passionate. Yeah, he's that one friend that gets way too angry playing video games. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in the manga it's like really interesting, right? Because we actually get to see them fight. We get to see all the gods fight, and the way the fight goes about it, it looks like they're all relative because they can all injure each other and they like show it. Like when Beltman grabbed everybody, uh, the rat dude who like um is like yo I'm it's Ella. Yeah, Ratella, he's like, oh shit, Belmont's like trying to kill us. And they're all worried. And this wouldn't really make sense if Belmont is someone who's like weaker. So it seems like all the gods of destruction are at this level where they could definitely beat one another, but there's definitely people who are higher. And then people Yeah, who there's are a lower. hierarchy. Yeah, if but I'm they're correct. definitely like all in that same range of power. Yeah. They like, if they hit you, if they like, if someone smacked Beerus, Beerus would fill it. 
But Kabir is more yeah. likely to beat them based on like skill and techniques, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, I think it's I think it's stated at least in the anime. I think either in like one of like the little magazine promos is that him and Katella are rivals because of like the Tom and Jerry joke they were doing with those two. Yeah, and you can either put Belmont above or below if you want to imply that Belmont didn't want to fight because he was afraid of how quickly uh, Beers gets pissed off. He was like, I'm not really trying to do all that. He's doing too much. Then yeah, but if you could also argue that Belmont just didn't really want to fight because Belmont's personality is like I'm not into fighting. I'm strong. I just don't. Yeah, he seems like a lazy it. guy because he was just faking like he was hurting and shit. It's like yeah, I had the theory either that Belmont just knew that this was gonna lead to them not actually having a really fight, and he was like, "Fuck it, it's no point." I think he had an inkling. He yeah, was smiling yeah. at the end of it, so it's almost like he kind of like guessed that this wasn't that serious, and he didn't really need to do anything, or he just did yeah. not want to deal because he knows that, with Beerus. Like, he knows Kelly. like. Yeah, because those two get way, 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 way there, and there's like a hierarchy of power. If I I know for at least for a fight, it's Beers and Kitella, Belmont, and then whoever's below them. Probably Champa because well, the way they go with Champa is like powers. Like oh, Beers is like kind of stronger. Beers talks to him. It's like no, nah, he beat the shit out of him. But they actually fought, and it's like no cap. Mm -hmm. So the hierarchy of power with Beers being either. Uh, you can argue the strongest god or, like, relative to Belmont and Gatella, uh, because you could, um, still keep their power, uh, and his potential, like, there, because, uh, we know that Beerus is also kind of lazy, but also, like, a lover fighter, and it's, like, a weird dynamic between them, because, like, I don't like doing work, but I also like fighting, but I also don't like doing work, so he'll sleep, yeah. and then he'll just, like, let shit happen and roll, but then the way he carries himself is like, no, nah, I can still fuck Goku up, which is still weird because like how like MUI is put above uh, God's destruction because it's an angel's technique. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like really interesting because I think they can definitely write in Beerus like being at this level and like uh, not have everything else be like, oh, they just wrote it in, just write it in by using what I suggested. I think that will work. And the series definitely implies this in different like aspects, especially in the most recent thing. That Beerus is someone who grows and evolves and he isn't stagnant. Because if he was the exact same power level, then it would be weird. Because it's like, why is it all yeah. these statements saying, like, over the gods of destruction? Over Beerus? It's just weird. It has to be, like, Beerus is growing. Just off camera. Yeah. Because if we go back to, like, the because I don't think it was in the anime. Uh, but in the manga, uh, Supreme Kai blatantly says that, like, Vegito Blue is stronger than Beerus. But, like... We know that at least MUI Goku is stronger than that version of Vegito, but he still, you know, puts himself above. So, yeah, he could be training or, like, continue to train uh, if he senses, like, a threat to his own power or he senses, like, a, a potential competition that he can, like, exploit to grow his own strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder, like... And for the Granola arc, I hope they have people like Broly in it. I think this is the perfect arc to have characters who have been like kind of in the backside in terms of like Saiyans, like Goten, Trunks, Broly, come in and or Gohan too, and be useful. I would love to see that. Yeah, too. I've been waiting for Broly myself to come back because his potential is fucking ridiculous. In yeah. base, he fucking went from, oh, I can spar with... Mind you, it's still impressive that him because... If we look at, like, the reality of it, he, like, fucking, um, what is his dad's name? Uh, his father, uh, fucking Paragus. Paragus clearly stopped training Broly fucking years ago. Broly's just been grinding on those little bugs, uh, for a hot minute that don't do anything for his power, uh, except eating them. It's like, it's like in a fucking RPG when you're, like, level 60 and you run across slime monsters. It's like, it's not doing nothing for him. So the fact that he, like, got fucking to earth and with minimal training from a dude whose power level can't be no more than like 8k fucking started beating on vegeta and goku who has god absorbed into their base and then still in like his ikari form which is just a 10 times multiplier started shitting on them again and then they got to god and good lord did he start fucking disrespecting goku i haven't seen goku scream like that since vegeta squeezed him in the saiyan heart Bro, Broly has, like, amazing... I think, like, not even, like, comparing other characters. He has really good feats. He literally smacked Goku and Vegeta so hard that in the movie, they didn't even say, like, maybe we should use, like, Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken or... Blue. Yeah, I, I noticed that. They didn't we, need to, we, we need to fuse to beat this nigga. 
Yeah, that they didn't even go to like <laughs> their. That speaks so much of how terrifying Broly must be. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to do jack Because shit. with the context of like Tournament of Power, like fucking Blue Evolution smacked around Topo and got a destruction form. So the fact that Goku's like, this ain't going to work. Yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're just going to go straight to fusion. Because we know how like, you know, Goku and Vegeta both feel about fusion. They're not fond of it. They much prefer to uh, beat people on their own. So the yeah. fact that Goku's like, hell no, fuck this. This is over. We're, yeah, it's clips for this dude. And even then after fusing, um, cause the statement, cause I always like look at this and with like, um, scrutiny where Gogeta pops up in front of, uh, Broly and Whis fighting and he says, look, you two can work together, uh, as like a reference to back in the fucking, what was it? The, um, resurrection of F where he says, if you two learn to work together, you could be, f- uh, beers. So I take that statement like, oh, you two can work together now, implying that fusion is like a way to win, which makes sense if you take into the fact that Vegito Blue supposedly stronger than Beerus. So with that, that would mean that like him keeping up with Gogeta's fusion puts his potential way above it. I know there's like contention for whether Broly is stronger than Beerus, but like it's pretty obvious he is. Yeah, I think the, I think opinion. where the movie fucked up, right? They should have had a more concrete thing. Cause Goku's like, well yeah, you're probably as strong as Beerus, but anime Goku Unless I'm bugging, has no recollection or like knowledge of Beerus is 100%. Right? He only knows of like yeah. the form that he went against. So then, of course, it makes this issue of like Goku does not know Beerus' is full power, but he's saying Broly's probably stronger than it, which means he could more than likely be wrong about it. You know, in the manga, yeah. I think it's more clear cut. In the manga, I think there's a lot of more things supporting it. Uh, it's like yeah. a light novel before it too, but that shit ain't even written by like Akira or the dude uh, or Toyotaro. Toyotaro. Yeah. So like the novel was written by some other guy. Uh, so that don't oh, really matter. I... But like the novel helped. The novel would have helped hard, bro, because Frieza flat out states he's stronger than Jiren. Uh, I think there's more statements of like, uh, fucking. It's like a cool feat for Frieza, but like, he punches Broly and Broly gets staggered. Like the novel was fucking. The novel would have helped a lot of scaling for characters. No cap. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know there was, like, a novel for it. I know that, like, the movie happens directly before the moral arc because when he uh, instant transmissions to Miris, that was literally him going from Broly to Miris. Yeah, in the, in the manga, they show it as, like, the Broly events happen, and then that literally directly goes into them meeting Miris and all that shit happens. Yeah, so if, like, the novel states that, like, um... Broly stronger than well, damn, that would actually put Frieza in a higher tier of power because I never, yeah. me personally, I never thought that like he got at least in the movie, Golden Frieza didn't seem to get that much stronger because uh, some people like to say that like because he sat there and took an ass beating for an hour from Broly that puts him like above Goku and Vegeta, but I kind of gotta disagree because just because you can take an ass beating don't mean like you're stronger. We know how durable Frieza is. He got cut in half blown back by Goku's yeah. uh, uh, key blast, and then a, survived a planetary explosion and was still alive. I yeah, think Frieza for sure Frieza has just, broken durability. Yeah, I think he's just a terrible-ass dude. I don't think I would put him above uh, Goku and Vegeta in terms of power because we know that, like, pre-TOP, he was keeping up with Golden Frieza in his base, and even if you want to argue, well, Frieza's not really trying. He's still in Golden. He is still in Golden. I would take Goku in base fighting on par with a suppressed Golden Frieza as a better feat for Goku than Frieza. Yeah. So, like, if he in the novel um, was able to stagger Broly, that still puts him, like, in a, a high tier power. Not, like, directly, like, oh, he could probably fight, you know, bro. We know he can't fight Broly or yeah. Gogeta. It's just or, something impressive. Uh, like, like, Frieza's definitely, like, it would have helped him a lot in terms of just making sure he's definitely stronger than we thought. Yeah, as opposed to just kind of like getting flat out embarrassed and a backflip yeah. stomped into most, the... I think what most people talk about like Frieza getting his ass whooped and why that would like correlate is because like people, um, like AP equals durability, right? So if I can yeah. take a certain amount of force, I can more than likely replicate it. Now, I don't think for like for Frieza, it's just a really, he he's interesting, right? Because Frieza's durability doesn't seem to always match what he can do. Because Frieza like fucking way back in the Nemesis, like survived like half his body. And some other shit. I think in the, when he blew up, he was like less than nothing. he was <laughs> half a face. I think like a pectoral and a shoulder. <laughs> so it's like doubt. Free, Frieza's race is basically like dead men walking for some reason. Like they, they <laughs> yeah, have, 
ridiculous durability. Yeah, because that means like part of his brain had to have been gone. He was just chilling. Yeah, and definitely his heart, because on the side that he was destroyed, his heart, unless his, I mean, granted, we don't know their biology, but, like, still, his brain was gone. Yeah, and then, he was I think alive. the T.O.P. is even more crazy when you really think about it. Frieza was fighting, because we know Goku got, like, energy from Frieza and the energy from Vegeta. Frieza went through the entire fight, the entire time of T.O.P., and did not ever get energy from someone. So he Not did, to mention... <laughs> All his ass beatings too, Bro, and kept he got going. Bitch fucked by Toki. <laughs> Proceed to come back, use Golden again. Bitch fucked by Jiren. Comes back and use Golden again. Frieza's stamina and durability is remarkable out of the group. <laughs> because, like, I'll never forget where Seventeen looked at him doing that Golden form. He says, "If you don't get out of that stupid fucking form, we don't got the time for this." Like his durability is so strained. I don't know if it's because because. I know, I don't know if Toriyama even remembers saying this or if this is like a Daisenshu thing, but I know it was stated that him specifically and his father were mutants of their race. That's not like the standard. So that might explain why his durability is like fucking weird, despite the fact that his strength doesn't seem to correlate. Like, no, what I, so I'm just going around about a whole bunch of six. I got like a bunch of stuff I want to talk about. Uh, that was I fine, mean, bro. Android I'm 17 in the anime is mad impressive because <laughs> he reaches this Super Saiyan Blue level off fighting poachers in the forest. It wasn't and just them. The manga was added to sell juniors. I said, how? Yeah. And, and then I find I that like, interesting, right? Because I think they, they try to... It's kind of fucked up why I didn't think they go the way I wanted to go. I wish the sell juniors would grow up, right? I, that would yeah. be cool as fuck. Because maybe, like, okay, I get maybe why they didn't do it because, like, the Cell as a, as a whole is kind of a broken mix up. Yeah, yeah Frieza, because of Goku, his, Vegeta. Technically, he should be able to go golden. And Bro, if he were to figure that out, yeah, it's, it's done. He would learn God Key, right? Just from being next to Goku, because he will have Goku's ability to grow and just do it. Yeah. Like, it, I get why they didn't. I just really feel like we should have seen like a teen Cell Jr. Just being yeah, like it would have made more. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have made more sense in terms of their scaling because I I was really uh, talking about man's about this like how like at a certain point seventeen should have got too strong for the cell juniors to really affect his training in the slightest. Yeah, like because they talked about that in Super. Um, Goku yeah. was like, I can't get any stronger than this. Like what I'm doing doesn't work. So it's weird that we see these other characters able to like excel past. I don't know. It's like. Goku is, of course, great at learning shit and, like, growing and, and et cetera. But yeah, like he's, like, a part of G. Can, like, they're... What they need to grow is just so little, they can just keep at it. It's, like, it's weird. Because 17 yeah. should hit a wall at some point. But it's just he didn't. And he just... You could argue that his cybernetics, like, sort of, like, cheat in the way he, he can grow, like... Ah, uh, how do I describe it? Like, an ex... Uh, I don't know. It's like, because again, like the Cell Junior should have been like the many little enemies in like an RPG that don't give you an experience, but like something about his cybernetics just boosted the fuck up. It doesn't matter regardless of how strong they are. Yeah, it's weird, bro. And in the anime, they gave Roshi a fucking stupid amp because he like smacks TN. And, and that blew my mind. Yeah, like, not to mention like. They really put in perspective how much like a martial arts master can still be like effective because like I get that Jira isn't trying because he's like he can sense Roshi's power and it ain't yeah. shit. But the fact that he was weaving his punches is still impressive as fuck. Yeah, I, I given think it's like crazy that humans could like Roshi learned something even on like a on like a low tier level, right? He was like, "Yo, I can do like this pseudo ultra instinct." It's this like pseudo omen. Can, yeah, it's like it's interesting that humans can definitely learn these techniques. Right. Yeah. And I like they take that somewhere. Yeah, Ultra Instinct isn't or at least Omen is Omen is the technique. Ultra Instinct is the uh transformation. Omen is something anyone can learn. It's not restricted to Saiyans, uh angels, gods. You can learn it. It's not impossible. It just depends on, I guess, like uh your mindset and at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think I can't see like Krillin and Tien and all of them learning like MUI, but if they learned Omen, I could definitely get behind Bro, it because like, they're like for potential. humans, right? Because I, I get why like Dragon Ball doesn't focus on them because it's like we have niggas who go blow up universes. So yeah, I feel like Dragon Ball is kind of like going in the direction where they're like power isn't everything in a fight. And there's techniques. other things that are just as great as just being able to blow up a universe. Yeah, like, we can see this with, like, Vegeta recently, because his new technique wasn't really something that was, like, 
uh, uh, an amp or a transformation, but it helped him like do things that like uh, boosted his power in like little ways that allowed his like skills to flourish, so he could like bridge the gap in power. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking like for humans, I don't know. Give them like what classes and RPGs that could just debuff niggas. If humans had techniques <laughs> that can just like make people weaker, so they could fight them on a on a fair scale, or just like use like sneaky tactics. I don't know. Humans could definitely be used better in Dragon Ball to where they're useful, but they're not like, it's not like stupid what they can do. It's like, yeah. okay, I get why they lost this, or I get why they won that. Like, it'd be cool, and we could have like a whole different version of how Dragon Ball fights usually go, because then we have like this more grounded level of fights, and then we have like that fucking outrageous universal destruction. Yeah. Like, like personally, I think like, uh, they could go to, what is that planet? Uh, Yard yeah, Rat. That would be perfect for all the humans because of yeah. all like the weird techniques. They could say that, like, uh, to explain away, like, why the humans are learning more techniques and, like, the Saiyans, like, oh, humans are better fitted for these techniques than, like, the Saiyans sort of, like, battle war-hearted bodies and uh, ki. But humans are much more, I guess, like, peaceful like the Yards, right? So they can uh, flourish better in these techniques, and they could get a lot stronger doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about, like... Their battle hardened bodies, because uh, I made like a response video to uh, this one dude talking about Kalen Khalifa, and you had like the opposite opinion. Uh, I love to get like your like full context on uh, the idea of Kalen Khalifa and like oh, okay. the dislike. So, like in my vid, right? What I was saying when I brought like Goten and Trunks and shit was just to say that the way Dragon Ball presented Super Saiyans fell off right then and there. That was it. That was the marker. The moment Goten and Trunks just did it. And Trunk, wait, oh, I get ice cream, Super Saiyan. Goten was like fighting my fucking uh, mad mother, Super Saiyan. That was the moment where, like, I knew personally it was done. Like, I always wonder, like, wh why Why did we get people who just turned into it with, like, no real emotional connection? Like, excluding Kappa. I think Kappa's fair. But, like, uh, Khalifa and Kill, how did they just do it, right? And I, I look back at Goten and Trunks, I'm like, this was the moment. This lets us know that if you're just different, you're just strong enough, just do it. There's no, like, deep emotional connection. There's no thematic scene where it's like fucking lightning bolts coming all around you or a bird snapping and shit None <laughs> of that. like all that died out that was that was the moment that was it <laughs> and then we got kale and khalifa and it's like to me it's like it wouldn't make sense because I, I get why people are like oh they're too strong but it's like if they weren't of any challenge the series would be worse for it you can't like present these other Dang. universe sayings that like evolve differently and I think they even stated too, like these are differently evolved sands. Yeah. See, with that, like I, it's, it's their age in the context of their training. It is implied that Khalifa does nothing but stay in that bum ass warehouse with her little delinquent fucking friends and spar with Kale sometimes. And she is six fucking teen. They don't have any advanced training like the. Uh, the time chamber yeah. or the weight room or nothing like that. So her jump in power makes no sense. And with Goten and Trunks, I think one of the reasons why people like and these childish, not serious, that I'm joking gag way that Toriyama used to write because a lot of the Boo arc has gag like writing as opposed to the Cell and the Android and the Namek sagas. Whereas in like the Boo arc, it seemed like he was just kind of like fucking around with a lot of like the concepts and shit. And people didn't take Goten Trunks seriously, but they, but in the anime, they're taking Kalen Khalifa kind of seriously and trying to imply their potential and their power and their growth. But like the context of their strength doesn't make any sense. And for them to jump to be able to fight niggas who have absorbed God into their bases, it doesn't make any yeah, sense. I, okay, so like on the point of like, uh, like the comedy aspect of the Boo Saga, I like I get why people bring it up. It just I don't know. It feels like a way to excuse it. I think comedy is meant to be like funny, and I don't see the joke in Goten and Trunks just going Super Saiyan, and why it's still. But here's the thing: of. I think it's just Toriyama's comedy isn't really for us. He's even said he's got like the humor of a fucking middle schooler. No, I, I don't it. really. You, you ever seen one of his I, old like mangas? There's literally a yeah. manga where a bitch gets raped, right? And, and the end of it, she becomes a <laughs> prostitute. That's a curious humor at a core. Yeah. I, that's why I think like people were like, well, that I, I it's like not it, to us, it's not that funny because Toriyama, at least in my opinion, isn't that funny. I there are times I've laughed. Yeah, yeah, there, I've laughed at Boo a couple of times. I thought like 
he was kind of funny. And like, uh, when the like, only time I laughed at Boo was when like Vegeta blew himself, and it ruined the scene for me because the way Boo screamed in the fucking anime dub geeked me so much. It ruined that scene when he blew himself up because that fucking ah, that shit had me dead. I fucking screamed off that. <laughs> like, I like to me the comedy aspect doesn't like excuse it still being kind of a shit on how Super Saiyan is like presented. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think... Oh, I definitely like, get that. Yeah. But I think it's like... I feel like if they had either presented Kellen Khalifa... If they had presented Kellen Khalifa in, like, either the same manner as Goten and Trunks were, like, the way they went Super Saiyan was, like, so silly that, like, okay, this is clearly, like, a joke. I, I can get past this. Or had presented their training and power much better. I could have been fine with it. But they... But they really don't. And I feel like I know, you know they fucked up and didn't do it right because they had to get Toriyama to come out of his little house to give some bullshit explanation that he half-assed and didn't really think through. As Cells, one is just metachlorians. He clearly was watching this when they called his ass up. And, and two, it doesn't, he did, I swear he forgot he had Zenkai Boost in his own story because he says that they evolved past the need uh, for fighting to grow in power, yet they can still get Zenkai boost. You know the biology that thrives off battle and warfare. Yeah, I don't think he really thought that through. But like on, on to the point of like um, Kel and Khalifa's like power, right? I think Kel definitely should get a pass because they established that she's like a different strain of a Saiyan, right? Like, yeah, that that I I you wanna if we wanna like. Take Broly and say that she also has full powered Super Saiyan, like because that's what Broly's is called, full power. It's his Ikari form stacked on top of his Super Saiyan, which weirdly makes it green, and that's why his and his power. But like her potential didn't it didn't do the same thing that Broly's. And granted, the arc was before he made the movie, but like it didn't do the same thing. She rages out, but it amounts to nothing. Goku is not taking her seriously. He Jiren is not taking her seriously. No one is taking her seriously who is relevant. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I can't get behind. But then, like, she, what is it? She, like, masters her little form and then, like, yeah. she calms down. She's not that buff. And then, like, oh, and I understand that Goku's fatigued, but, like, he is in God. He is in God. Yeah, I, I think, like, if people just... get to fight, I don't even see it as much as them, like, really pressuring Goku. Otherwise, like, fusion wouldn't even have been necessary. Right? Like, the act of them needing to be like, yeah, we more than likely should fuse to fight this nigga. And then, like, how the fight's going, Goku's, like, teaching Khalifa. Like, he's literally yeah. like, yo, this is how you go Super Saiyan 2. This is after Image. He's clearly fucking I think around that was, her. Yeah, I, see, I always gave that pass because he's clearly, like, training them. But, like, I think that's also another reason why people didn't, like, really gravitate, especially towards, like, Khalifa, because she just hit Super Saiyan 2 like that. I think that's what really did it for people, yeah. like, in the same day. It's, yeah, and, I think it's like... I, Obviously, right? It's just a case of Khalifa's just built different. Like that's just that's yeah. just what it is. Khalifa's just one of those individuals in the Dragon Ball universe that just like like just has the power to reach these forms, you know. In the same vein of like, yeah. like Goten and Trunks inherited Goku and Vegeta's individual power when they was born, and he just went Super Saiyan, you know. Well, that's how like they excuse yeah. it, like, like that's the head cannon people make up for it. So I was like, I see yeah, that, they... like that. I wish Khalifa and Kel were more. I wish they had more personality. I think that would have made them a lot I think, more like. Yeah, because with Khalifa, she's just like she's just a bitch. Toriyama's brand, yeah, Toriyama's brand of women, but without any of like the enjoyment. Like I like everyone likes Bulma. She's still like the same girl we met back in Dragon Ball, but like she's still an enjoyable character that people can gravitate towards. Same with Chi Chi, uh, Videl not so much. They kind of did her grimy, in my opinion. Videl was uh, loading when I liked Videl because she was a fighter. And we and, and I get Chi Chi was too, but like once they got married, I don't know why they just like settled down. I wish we got to see at least one character have a wife. No, 18. 18 counts, right? Because she still fights. But I yeah. wish that well, mm, stayed in that background, right? And we get to feel yeah. that more instead of her kind of just being like, fuck it, I'm done. Like, I yeah. don't know. I don't want to do like Videl was done. Videl was done grimy, and I can't. I can't stand it because she wanted to be a fighter. Chi Chi, under I understand. She's always just wanted to be the greatest wife and mother ever since she was like a little kid. So like, I get why she doesn't fight. Eighteen, kidnapped by a creepy old man, forced to become a robot, and then fight to the. She wasn't really with the shits for fighting. She just uses her power to chase a bag, which I can completely understand. To chase a bag. 
Like, like if Khalifa should have had more to her, right? I don't know how they could have written her, but maybe more like I don't. Like, my, they, they try to make her like, like the typical like, delinquent like, you'd see in any other anime with like the Gokuran uniform and the Oprah oh, type like, shit. But like the yeah. way she carries herself is so like irritable. It's not yeah, enjoyable so delinquent. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's not like uh. Uh, uh, Jotaro uh, delinquent or those usual suspects. It's more like you are really condescending for someone yeah, who like ain't at that level. Big. I wish that <laughs> Khalifa would have had some type of backstory so we understand more of why she's kind of like a dickhead. Just a little yeah. bit. Because there's, no, there's just, not really a lot well, there. Well, Kaba says that she's the strongest Saiyan, so I guess like, like Vegeta, she's never been checked. But like... The, I don't know, maybe because the way Vegeta was written, it was like, that was like the foil to him. Whereas like, her pretentiousness is more gassed up, whereas like, Vegeta's pretentiousness was the foil. It was his downfall. It was the, it was the, it was the, yeah, it was the reason why he lost to the Earthlings. It was the reason why Frieza bitched him. It was the reason why Zarbon bitched. It was the reason why he gets bitched a lot. You need to but have like, her, you need to have like that, uh, what would be the word? Like that retribution for that type of negative attitude. Yeah. Right. But her negative dickhead, attitude. They need to get punished. Yeah, but her, I mean, and I guess she got punched, but I feel like she's not going to learn past this. She's yeah. just going to be like, oh, well, you know, he was a fluke. He had that God technique. So it's like, no, baby girl, you need to grow past it. I'm not saying she can't still be a delinquent. I like the delinquent attitude in a lot of characters, but I just think it's not carried in the way it should be for uh, someone like her. It's gassed up. It's made to yeah. be like this positive Maybe trait. Maybe they should have like Kaba be like as strong as Khalifa, right? I think this would have balanced out perfectly because she needs something to like anchor her to like being likable and having to grow. Kaba be as strong as yeah. Khalifa and have them compete and have Kaba be more of like the straight man. And every time Khalifa acts out, he like checks her ass. Then he have to fight. And then it's like that. She has to grow from interacting with someone who's like the law, right? Like a physical representation of like the law and, and like trying to like hold her down. And they grow from it. Kaba learns to be more chill. It's like a reverse go yeah. for Vegeta. They have to grow yeah, from each I other could... and learn from that. That would have made them likable. Kale. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you could have done for her. I'm sorry. We, I think everyone in the Dragon Ball community has been like, she's a lost cause. I'm sorry. And then like, at first do. it was like, she could have had potential, but then he had to make Broly so good. It was like, and she's bro, done. Like, and bro, she's I was like, done. you know you fucked up here. Because we're not... I, I knew the moment Broly came into the picture, I'm like, we're probably not going to see Kill in, like, any scene with him ever. <laughs> she's probably not going to show up. I, I would enjoy just, them meeting up because some people like to have a headcanon that, like, Khalifa is the U6 Goku and that Kale is the U6 Broly and that Cobb is the U6 Vegeta, which I could get behind. It's weird. It doesn't make any sense, but I could get behind. I think for Cabba it works, right? Because, like, Vegeta notes, oh, he has the same stance as me, and they kind of, like... They kind of, like, have that same personality, just on different levels. Like, Cab was more humble than Vegeta was. You know, they're, like, opposites, but they share similarities. I don't yeah. know what the fuck Khalifa got with Goku. She's kind of a dickhead. Like, are they saying, like, Goku, if he didn't get hit in the head, would be Khalifa? Is that, like, To be fair, kind of, like, yeah, because think about it. Goku got humble throughout all of the journeys through Dragon Ball. But, like, like with Roshi, because a lot of people imply that if he hadn't lost Roshi, he would have never been humbled. He would have stayed this sort of like I'm because at that time he thought he was top dog I think he had just been beat the Red Ribbon Army I think he thought he was like that nigga at the time and he was like he's he's feeling big and powerful so when Roshi like stomped him out and beat him in the tournament and made it seem like he really wasn't a bad challenge Goku humbled himself Khalifa has never been humble mm -hmm. ever I would, say, I would say Goku was more so anchored in terms of like not being a dickhead but like Grandpa Gohan I think everything that Grandpa Gohan taught him just made him less of a dickhead and then say Vegeta or Khalifa. Because Vegeta never had, like, someone to tell him, yo, dude, don't be a dickhead. You know, don't be an asshole. Yeah. Like, chill out. Because he never interacted with Frieza enough to humble himself. I mean, he knew the strength gap, but, like, he never interacted with Frieza enough to humble himself. He yeah, was just with Raditz and Nappa, and he was always bitching them at every point. Yeah, I would also say for Vegeta, he used his pride as more of, like, a shield. Like, it had built up too strong by that point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He had, he you, couldn't really be vulnerable because he was in Frieza's army and, like, vulnerability, I'm more likely going to assume would have got him, like, fucked up. You not know? to mention, that's not, like, the same way it was treated, like, weird yeah, as so Vegeta like, and Bardock. Vegeta, I get why he's prideful. <laughs> Khalifa, I can get it. I just think, like, and then for Goku, I can understand why he didn't go that same path. So they're arguing, like, if Goku didn't have Grandpa Gohan and get hit in the head and didn't have the experiences to humble himself overall, he would have been like Khalifa. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see. I can see. see. Kale, I understand. They're both that meat <laughs> potential. But what? Kale is. <laughs> she doesn't have much oh. to her. Like it, it's nothing interesting about Kale, bro. <laughs> no, they in the manga they try to do like oh the legendary demon saying. I said that sounds way too edgy. That was way no, like, you're too. You're trying too no. hard to make her special, bro. Like yeah, like she and it's like when she tried to go her berserk from a lot of people trying to be like oh she's fighting blue. Do you see how? Like, like baby, baby that piss stream of a Kamehameha is he's not, not trying. trying. That's, that's that ain't shit. She's walking through a, a nice, nice little tube. But it's, it's not, not doing that. It's, it's not, not it's just her personality. I think another thing is that a lot of people in the anime community in general, I think, have like grown away from the Hinata type vibes a girl character can give off. A lot more people want the Mario Leonas, the fucking, uh, the Rebbies from Black Lagoons. Bro, that's crazy. We said the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the Rebbies. <laughs> yeah. They, everyone wants those type of female characters because, you know, you equate those to, like, the strongest ones, the ones with the personalities, or, like, the grounded ones like Rize Hawkeye. A lot of people don't like the Hinanas anymore, so it's like her personality is just so unenjoyable, and yeah, her whole weird. thing is like is clip. Yeah, and her whole thing is clit writing to Leaf look constantly. A hundred percent, bro. Wait, I gotta have. I, I told my friends I was gonna like finish playing the game with him. Right, we gotta finish this. Oh yeah. Like, would you oh, be cool yeah, to like do like do. Dragon Ball talks to me? So I post videos on my YouTube channel. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely dude. dude. I just started getting into TikTok recently, so I've been, Man, I've been okay, enjoying cool. this. Because I want, I need like more people to talk to, right? So I'm like, it, the fact that we're clicking like this and we're having like this good of a conversation, I'm like, yeah, this is yeah, crazy. this is this should go crazy, bro. I'm always, I was available. I only work, uh, I work overnight, so throughout the day, I am straight. I don't go to school in the summer, so yeah, I'm straight, bro. Okay, bet, bro. It was super nice talking to you, bro. Oh, thanks, dude. I enjoyed it. Been a big fan since, like, I joined TikTok. I think you were one of the first, like, anime people I saw. I was like, this dude's funny as shit. I'm following. I appreciate it, bro. That means a lot. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, bro. Oh, you too, boy.